my brothers and sisters. God is here. For he is a life. Today, I have a lesson to share with you. I hope that this thing will help us. The title for my sermon today is The Grace of God Helps Us in Life. The grace of God from God helps me in my life. The grace of God from God helps you in your life. You can trust in his grace. When you look at the Bible, as so many examples that the follower of the Lord, the Israelites, they were facing similar situation like us. Abraham was facing a drought. And famine in his life. But we see that the Lord God provide. Moses had to deal with ten plagues. And then he lead after dealing with ten plagues in Egypt. Then he had to lead almost like three million people out of Egypt. Go to the promised land. Joshua was leading people out of wilderness. There's no food, there's no water, there's no proper place to sleep. He leads his people go to the promised land. They reach the promised land. Jesus and his disciple got in his boat, got hit by the big wave. But God calms the storms and the wave. The Apostle Paul, ship got wrecked. The Lord protects Apostle Paul. And he get up to the shore, to the island. He got bitten by a poisonous snake. God protected him. God healed him. You see, so many examples throughout the Bible. We can see that the Lord God is a God that has power. It's a God that has all authority. I'm going to read to us from the book of Romans, chapter 5. I'm going to read from ESV. Chapter 5, verse 2 to 5. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith. Through Him. Through who? Through Him. Through God. Through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have also obtained access by faith. Into this grace in which we stand. Only by the grace of God. We can stand in this life. And we rejoice in hope. By this grace in which we stand and we rejoice. We happy, rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings. We rejoice. How many people on earth rejoice in their suffering? No, none. But Paul said... He rejoiced in the suffering. Why? There must be something good in that. Knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. There is a hope. The hope from God that will never ever put anyone to shame. This hope 
will not put me to shame. This hope will not put you to shame, my brothers and sisters. This is the wonderful hope. That's why the Apostle Paul said he rejoiced in his suffering. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read four, verse four again. And endurance produces characters. Character and characters produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love, because what? Because love, God's love, because the love of God has been poured, has been poured into our hearts. The love of God has been pulled into your heart, into the heart of the people of this world that are willing to accept His grace. Heart through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. This is amazing. Scripture rejoice in the suffering because there's a great hope that comes out of that. You know, in this world of pandemic, COVID-19 is a deadly viruses. Some viruses are small, some viruses are hard. This virus is bad, it's deadly. But, 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 it's time to see, my brothers and sisters, it's time to see the grace of God protecting you, the grace of God protecting me, even though things go hard in this life. It's time for us to see that grace. You see, hard things in life, that God given people to help us. Hard things in life. God does not want us to work alone by ourselves and go destroy forever. But God send someone, send people to help us. It takes both men and women working hard together to help each other to make a great marriage. For those who marry, get already married, need hard working, require hard working between you both. It takes parents working hard to lead a great kid. It doesn't just leave the kid, whatever. No, take leadership. It takes teachers hard working to have students to pass all of their tests, all of their exams. It takes a man of God to protect his household. In wars, God has soldiers to protect us. In sickness, God uses doctors to help us. It takes doctors hardworking to have with the sick patients. It takes a strong faith by the Holy Spirit for a Christian, for a Christ follower to trust in God in hard time. It takes your faith, it takes my faith to believe in God in this hard time. It's not easy, it's hard, but it's doable. Because we have the Father, the who is alive and well, who have enough power, who have enough energy, authority, can send the people, or He can come Himself and protect us Himself. In this hard time, I have a couple points for us to learn from. Point number one. Whatever happened to you, to me, listen and follow the expert instructions. I listed out, for example, in times of war. You listen to the expert, tell you what to do. 
in order for you to be safe. safe. In current situation, now with the world pandemic, you look to the doctors and nurses and the Ministry of Health. They've gone through, they have experiences, and they have guidelines for us to do, to follow, so that we'll be, be safe. The question asks, how about these nurses and doctors? Are they afraid? Of course, they are afraid like you and I. But they are trained to deal with this. They are trained to deal with diseases and sicknesses. They are trained to help the patient in times of sicknesses and diseases and this world pandemic. We listen to them. They are sent by God. Sent by God to help you and I to be safe. You can be safe. Just listen to the expert. It's listen to the expert. Point number two. Whatever circumstances happen in life, you listen to God and follow His instructions. The Word of God gives you and I wisdom. For the wisdom alone comes from God. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom of the knowledge. Listen to His instruction. The Holy Spirit will guide you and I out of troubles when you listen to the Spirit. If you want to get out of trouble, just listen to God. Obey His guidance. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2 to 3, Paul said to the Corinth, to the church of God in Corinth, I can say to the church of God in Phnom Penh, to the church of God in Cambodia, to the church of God in the world, to those things defied in Christ, for those who call themselves Christian, for those who call themselves followers of Christ, and call to be His holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. The Lord. Their Lord and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Verse 3, grace and peace. Paul gave grace and peace to you from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God knows how to do something. He knows how to do it well. The one thing that he knows how to do, only know how to do good thing and great thing. He knows how to protect you and I. His grace is there. His mercy is there. Is ready to help you in times of need. It's ready all the time. Another scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. But he said to me, the Lord said to him, my grace who God's grace is sufficient for you. God's grace is sufficient for me. God's grace is sufficient for you and your family and what you do for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. God's power is made perfect. In your weaknesses and my weaknesses, my brothers and sisters, when you feel that you're weak, when you feel that you don't know how to do anything, when you feel like you're not safe, it's okay. Don't blame yourself. Don't blame others. Just trust God. It's perfect. It's perfect 
This grace is perfect for you. This grace is perfect for me. Because God is good. He is great. He's a good God. Therefore, Paul said, Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. He said, I, I have a lot of weaknesses. But look at this. My brothers and sisters, these weaknesses, God made it great. The Lord don't want me to be down there. He lifts me up. You see that? My weakness, Allah, I have a lot of weaknesses. But look at this God. Look at the hand of the mighty God. He picked me up. And he helped me to be a strong man. He helped you to be a strong woman. He helped you in times of your need. About my weaknesses. That's Paul said. So that in Christ, power may rest on me. Paul does not want to boast about himself, but he loves the grace of God. Work through his body, work through his life, so that in him is the power of Christ that operate in him. My brothers and sisters, you can listen and obey God. You are just fine. You will be safe. It's all right. You will get out of this. Because his grace is rich while we are weak. Point number three. Whenever we have issue or whatever problems going on in our life. You want to get out of this safely. Point number three. Continue your journey by controlling over our fear. Continue this journey in life. Don't stuck there. Don't stuck in one place. You don't want to step out by faith. No. Don't do that. Step out by faith. Controlling over your fear. Controlling over my fear. Fear come from what? From what you see with your own eyes. Fear coming from bad news. You know, of course, we need to listen to the instruction to some of these news. But some of the news, you don't have to listen to it. It's a waste of your time. Don't need to do that. Listen to the Word of God. Control over this fear. This fear... It's not going to help you, but it's going to hurt you. Don't allow the spirit of fear leading you, but let the spirit of the living God to lead you. So when there's a chaos happening, go to God right away. Go to God. By spending time with God and being filled with the Holy Spirit of God and being Grateful and thankful to God always. I'm going to finish with the scriptures. The scripture in Psalms 136 verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord God. His loving kindness is everlasting. He loves you. He loves your family. He loves me. There's no one can take you away from God. I guarantee you, you can trust God. God is on your side. Trust Him. It's okay. This life, trust in His grace. You will get out of this world pandemic just fine. Let me pray for you. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, I did not know 
where you are at right now. Maybe you're at home and struggle with your business. Maybe you struggle with your finance. Maybe you struggle with fear. Maybe you struggle with relationship. Maybe this, maybe that, I don't know. But I know one thing that the grace of God is ready to come in to your heart. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. I welcome you. And I invite you to be in everyone's heart. I did not know what they need. But you know. Look God place that need with your love Father thank you so much Lord God for your promise that always say you will not leave us nor forsaking us Lord God I love every one of my brothers and sisters feel your love right now Lord God come in More of you, Lord God. More of you, Lord God. More of you. Come in to everyone's heart, Lord God. These people is safe, are safe in your hand. I trust you, Lord God. Because through the Bible, I can see that you are the Lord, my, you are the Lord our God that protect your people all the time. You answer prayer all the time. Lord God, not just protect these people and bless these people. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. And believe God for miracles in this world pandemic. Amen. Hallelujah. We can live. We can live. You can live. You can live. In Jesus' name, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen.